Dear students, please note down. These notes have been uploaded in the description of video. Please download your notes. Dear students, in this lecture of type study of pigeon, today I will clear actual skeleton of birds or pigeon. Dear students, in case of birds, actual skeleton is well developed, which helps in flight adaptation. As well as actual skeleton protects the birds against mechanical injuries. It protects the animal from temperature fluctuations and harmful radiations. Dear students, actual skeleton that consists of four types of actual skeletal structures like rampotheca, claws, scales, and feathers. All these actual skeletal structures are derived from epidermis. Not only in our last lecture, we have discussed skin or entanglement of pigeon. Dear students, that skin or entanglement consists of two parts, outer epidermis and inner dermis. All these exoskeletal structures are derived from epidermis. Not only these epidermal structures which are of four types and these exoskeletal structures are discussed as first one is rampotheca. No down, rampotheca. It is a hard horny sheath which is present over beak, and this rampotheca which covers the beak that is protective in nature. Second, exoskeletal structure that is claws. Dear student, claws are present over toes of hind limb. And these claws are homologous in origin, in structure, in function to the claws of reptiles. Next structure is scales, epidermal scales, corneous scutes. And these epidermal scales, which are characteristic features of reptiles, lizards, snakes, as well as these scales are present over hind limb in case of birds, in case of patient. Dear students, these epidermal scales or corneoscutes, which also present in aquatic birds, this web of hind limb that also possesses epidermal scales. In case of fighting birds, like male fowl, this modification which is a modified scale and this structure which is spur, S-P-U-R of male fighting birds like male fowl and this spur which is a modification of epidermal scale. The important topic of this lecture that is feather. Dear student, feathers which are exclusively found in birds, in aves, and the feathers, which are exoskeletal structures. And these are modifications of reptilian scales. Dear student, feathers, which are of different types, and the feathers present all over the body, which collectively constitute plumes. In this lecture, I will clear a typical structure of a feather, a contour feather, which covers all over the body surface, wings and tail. A typical feather consists of a central axis which is stem-like structure. And this central axis or central stem, it is scapus. And the second part, which is expanded fan-like structure. And this part, it is vein or vacuola. Dear student, it means a feather consists of two parts. One is central axis, that is scapus. And this expanded fan-like structure, it is vacuola. This central axis scapus is again divided into two parts. This lower basal part, it is Clamus and this clamus having two openings, two pores are there. One is inferior umbilicus, and this 
second aperture it is superior umbilicus through these pores through this inferior and superior umbilicus nutrients are supplied to a developing feather dear students this expanded part it is vein or vagulum this vagulum is divided into two unequal parts by this central axis rachis or shaft and each half of this vein or vagulum consists of about 600 barbs or rami dear students these barbs or rami which run almost parallel to each other this is a magnified structure of a typical feather that shows this is the central axis rachis or rami and these longitudinal structures which arise from this rachis these are barbs or rami and dear students each barb on its both sides proximal upper and lower side give rise a series of filamentous structures and these structures are barbules the barbules of upper side or proximal side produce these hook like structures these are hooklets or barbicles and the distal barbules possesses grooved edges it means these hooklets which interact with the grooved edges of distal barbules to produce an interlocking system of these barbs dear students this is all about a general structure of a typical feather a dart typical feather having a central axis which is scapus and that scapus is divided into two parts this lower small stalk like structure it is clamus that possesses two pores this lower pore it is inferior umbilicus and this upper it is superior umbilicus through these uh, inferior and superior umbilicus or pores nutrients are supplied to a developing feather here at the junction of this expanded part vacuolum and the terminal part of this scapus a tuft of a group of soft feathers called after shaft or hyporachis and dear students this expanded part it is vein vacuolum here these longitudinal structures and these structures which run almost parallel to each other these are barbs and each bar having a series of filamentous structures on its either side these are barbules the barbules of upper side possesses hooklets while the barbules of distal side possesses grooved edges these hooklets interact with the grooved edges of distal barbules to produce an interlocking system dear students this is all about exoskeletal structures and a typical structure of feather in our next lecture we will discuss different types of